It is my privilege to uh, introduce uh, a distinguished uh, member of the Iridium Corporation uh, to tackle this next set of discussions in emerging communication technologies. Mr. Charlie Laper, who is the Director of Government Programs at Iridium Communications Incorporated. Uh, he has been uh, serving as the director of this, uh, the only satellite communications company, uh, the director of government programs, excuse me, the only satellite communications company that, that offers truly global voice and data coverage. Uh, Mr. Weber is responsible for developing strategic plans for and marketing, the, marketing to U.S. and foreign governments with emphasis, emphasis in increasing applications and use uh, written in the U.S. Department of Defense. Charlie holds a master's degree in business administration with an with aviation focus from Ember Riddle Aeronautical University, a bachelor's, uh, a bachelor's degree in science in civil engineering in the Citadel. His military education includes Air War College and Air Command Staff College by correspondence to programs that I have gone through myself. So I can really appreciate Charlie's experience in those areas. And I know of his prior service a bit. Uh, he was an active duty Air Force officer, leadership engineering and operational roles in the Missile Defense Agency at Redstone Arsenal. Also served at the National Security Space Institute at Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado. Uh, also served in the International Security Assistance Force in Kabul, Afghanistan, Air Force Personnel Center at Air Randolph Air Force Base, Texas, the National Reconnaissance Office in DC, Air Education Training Command, and Air Force Space Command. A truly really remarkable set of experiences bringing the table to steeped in defense understanding and focus on in advancing communications. At this point, I respectfully offer the floor to Mr. Charlie Lever uh, and looking forward to how he can advance a reading everywhere in support of our communications. Charlie, the floor is yours. Hey, thanks, uh, Mr. Key. I appreciate it. I'm going to share my screen. So, uh, Ellie, if you don't mind, just give me a, a validation that everyone can see my presentation. Okay. Okay, it looks great. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, Mr. Key, I really appreciate the uh, introduction. And uh, we definitely, from a, on behalf of Iridium, value our relationship with the Arctic Domain Awareness Center. And uh, Ellie, I appreciate all your uh, logistics and preparation. Um, yeah, I am Charlie Lever. I do work uh, the government side of Iridium. So we have basically very generically uh, two sides of Iridium. 80% is commercial, 20% is government. And we define that by our, our customers. Uh, so uh, this presentation is gonna really have kind of a federal government lean, but not exclusively. We'll talk about opportunities for military and let's call it state local authority integration. Um, and there's a way we can do that. And I'm, I'm, gonna, gonna pr I'm gonna definitely present that. Um, we're gonna talk about the uh, Iridium constellation at large. What makes us unique as far as the constellation, the dynamic nature, the agility. And Mr. Key, I think you, you, you nailed it. You know, that pole to pole global, global coverage you know, it, traditionally, you're, you're, you know, obviously your geo birds are 65 to 65. We actually thrive off that post above and below that 65 degrees. Uh, we like to think of the Arctic as our neighborhood. Uh, an opportunity to collaborate with other companies, not necessarily competition. Uh, we have a niche, an L-band niche, and we'll talk a little bit about that and some of the utility behind that. Uh, what is our DOD relationship? It's really highlighted by our EMSS contract. And I think that's really important for the audience to focus on because as you're engaging with the end user as the Air Force, Navy, uh, Coast Guard, to know that they can leverage this contract for airtime. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that as I progress through the slides. Products and services, absolutely. Uh, we just we launched a new uh, constellation, and with that comes greater capability, great, and, and a lot more uh, broad uh, bandwidth. And we'll talk, we'll talk about the applications in that regard. Uh, Arctic demo. Uh, we are sponsoring a what we call an Arctic demonstration. We're titling it a communications exercise. So just think of, uh, you know, your combatant commands having a, 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 a you know a global lightning exercise. This is our version of that. It's Iridium based, it's Iridium sponsored. Uh, the focus is gonna be Iridium services and applications. And we'll talk about the locations 
uh, that we're going we're going to focus on during that uh, particular demonstration. In lines of businesses, how is Iridium constructed as a corporation? Uh, I think it's very important because a lot of those, whether it's commercial or military, it's ultimately touching the Arctic, and we'll talk about that as we progress through these slides. Iridium overview, you can see that uh, uh, video to the right. And I think that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that speaks to it. Uh, pole to pole, we got 66 operational satellites in LEO. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Mee Treadwell hit on that with that low latency, being able to leverage that low latency. Uh, your data is, whether you're in the Arctic or whether you're in the CENTCOM area, Europe, US, it doesn't matter, it'll go up to the satellite in view. Uh, your data will travel across cross links and for government, it'll ultimately touch down at a DOD gateway in Hawaii. So there's inherent security to this constellation and you're not M hopping across the globe. Uh, so a lot of people value that, especially on the government side. So that's important to note. Uh, you have a satellite every eight minutes overhead. Each satellite has 48 spot beams. So you're, you're bouncing around from uh, one spot beam to another. Uh, it's not, you know, officially jam resistant, but it has that effect. All right. So there's a lot of value to that as well. Um, yeah, that mesh network, I just hit on that. That's that, the whole being able to leverage the, uh, uh, the cross link. And um, we do have spares as well. We have uh, on-orbit spares. Uh, so that's a total of 75 in orbit. And we have uh, six on the ground as well. We use that for development and test. Um, and also for the ultimate uh, uh, value of a spare. Over 1.4 million subscribers, 167K that touches down at the DOD gateway in Hawaii. Um, and key markets, government, maritime, aviation, land, mobile, IOT. IOT is a huge portion of our, our, our business. Uh, you know, from, you, you might traditionally think of Iridium as your handheld sat phone, and, and that's great. We still do that very, and we take pride in it. But uh, machine to machine, IOT, unintended sensors, buoy technologies, et cetera. We're, we're really thriving in that area as well, and it's a huge part of our business. Um, yeah, so next slide here. I'm going to, hey, Mead, I'm, I'm going to have an intro, uh, uh, one of your intros during the SIA uh, conference. And I think this really hits on, you know, the uh, value of SATCOM in the Arctic and really the accessibility of the Arctic now. So I'm going to play this video and then we'll, we'll continue with the presentation. My name is Mead Treadwell. I'm a former lieutenant governor of Alaska, a former chair of the U.S. Arctic Research Commission and an investor across the Arctic region. I also currently co-chair the Wilson Center's Polar Institute, the Polar Advisory Board. Today, I speak not as a spokesman for Iridium, but as an advocate for the Arctic. In our lifetime, we will see a new ocean of the world, the Arctic Ocean, newly accessible to navigation. How many times in human history does mankind get a new ocean. And with that new ocean comes new trade routes, territorial claims, tourism, science, resource development. And along with that comes new search and rescue needs and a new need for defense. All these activities, whether civil, military, commercial, or academic, need telecommunications and what the military calls the common operating picture of what's going on. That's why this new ocean, the Arctic, is very dependent on another new ocean, space, to meet its voice, data, video, and remote sensing. Today, polar orbiting platforms in space help us communicate, track ships and aircraft, and even marine mammals. We measure ice, predict the weather, and with CMDSS extension to the polar region, we will save lives. The coming LEO networks will help us do much more. Just this summer, a Russian military exercise in the Bering Sea inside the 200 mile limit in the United States dramatically disrupted our fishery. High fire missile exercises are not very compatible with the fishing. We are seeing more Russian bases installed in the north. Chinese vessels are coming through. And whether your polar sea is the Bering or the Barren, the Baltic or the Beaufort, geopolitically, things are heating up. Every U.S. DOD branch and the Coast Guard, pushed by NORTHCOM and UCOM, is examining their needs in the 
So uh, really great words uh, from Mr. Treadwell, obviously a Arctic expert and part of our Polar, uh, Polar Advisory Board as the chair. Uh, so the accessibility impacts on military and geopolitics is certainly a, uh, an enduring theme uh, as we approach this Arctic uh, uh, journey. Uh, Iridium has uh, launched a recent uh, constellation as of 2019, and it brings and more capability than what your legacy Iridium uh, uh, that you think of. Um, you, you know, we, we actually deorbited 70 plus satellites and launched 70 plus new satellites, which is an incredible technical marvel, uh, leveraging uh, the SpaceX Falcon 9. Uh, so now we have 75 to include the spares, brand new satellites as of 19. Uh, and, and, and the constellation brings, you know, global coverage. Our niche is the L band. L band is um, allows us to have extremely small, compact ground solutions, and that's really our niche. On the move connectivity. Our transceivers can be the size of a postal stamp, antenna the size of your pinky, and maintain on the move connectivity. We might not necessarily always be the primary of your pace plan but we will ensure the continuity of communications. Um, so I think that's important. we talked about the cross-link capability, the inherent security of that. Uh, we do have a DOD secure uh, gateway and facility. And you know, the inherent uh, ability to go from one spot beam and one, uh, a satellite within eight minutes gives you that really that frequency resiliency, uh, low power and low intercept effectively. Um, we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about our increased capacity. So we're not just pushing short burst data, voice and, and, and short burst, you know, text data. Now we're, we're up to high, in, high quality imagery, uh, full motion video that we're pushing across Iridium Constellation. And that's a really a huge piece. Um, so if, if you're trying to push uh, polar ice at 80 degrees north, we can enable that particular solution. And I want to hit on that a little bit as we progress through the slides. Alt-Nav is one of our capabilities. We leverage one of our high-powered channels uh, to uh, augment your GPS signal. If you're in a GPS degraded or denied environment, you can leverage an Iridium solution to ensure you get that uh, precision timing and navigation. Uh, so I think that's extremely important as we progress through these slides. Um, EMSS, you'll, you'll hear about Enhanced Mobile Satellite Services. It's our program office. Uh, they fall under uh, U.S. Space Force, and they also oversee our, uh, our DOD contract, our airtime contract. Um, you know, the services at the comptroller level, so really big Air Force, big Army, big Navy, big Coast Guard under DHS, will actually, uh, uh, they've already paid for a portion of the airtime. Uh, so this is for our narrowband services, our voice, our SPD, PLI, our netted comms, uh, our legacy Iridium, uh, of what you think of, falls under this contract. So as an end user, I'm a Navy, I'm on the ground, I'm on the ship as a Navy, uh, 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 Navy personnel. I don't have to worry about budgeting airtime. It's already been done, big Navy. Uh, so airtime is unlimited under this contract for narrowband services Iridium. Also, unlimited devices as well. Uh, Army's the biggest uh, pie of this particular contract. That's our biggest customer from a DOD perspective, really a government perspective. 
Um, DHS has a piece of this. Uh, NOAA, Department of Interior, NSF also, and you know a lot of their Antarctica uh, applications, whether it's seismic sensors, buoy technologies, even voice, they leverage this contract as well. So it's very important that we get this out from an education perspective, because if I'm an Air Force end user, uh, I, you know, sure, you can definitely pay for commercial air, Tom, that's your prerogative, but you need to understand that you can leverage this EMSS contract, not only for unlimited air, Tom, but you're also touching down at that DOD facility, as we talked about, that gateway, that added security. So uh, pretty important to get this word out. That And we're in the second year of this contract. So this is a seven-year contract. We're in the second year of it. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I definitely want to get that word out from an education perspective, no, no doubt. Uh, yeah, so th these are our scalability, the size of our transceivers. We're not a big pipe company. Uh, we're not um, in the business of big antennas and big terminals and big pipes. We're in the business for our niche, which is L-band. We, we can certainly complement that, no doubt. And that's part of the, the whole continuity of comms, especially in the Arctic. We might even become your primary uh, as, the, uh, as a commercial provider up in, uh, above that 65 degrees. But you can see our narrowband services, that is 2.4 kilobits per second. Transceivers, that, uh, the one to the right within the green box, size of a postal stamp. So just to give you the indication of the size of our, our transceivers. Um, and that 2.4 kilobits per second generally constitute what falls under that EMSS contract. So a lot of your voice, SPD, uh, netted communications, your radios go through these particular transceivers. And we, we also have some sensor data also goes through those as well. Uh, we talked about the Iridium Next constellation. What does it bring to the fight from an in-solution perspective? Well, this is exactly what's under that yellow box. We've enabled, enabled our CERTIS product line. Uh, and it, it, it's the 2288 kilobits up and down respectively. And then you see the 352, 704 respectively. And again, the size, uh, the one to the, to the left is the size of your cell phone. Uh, the 9810 transceiver to the right is about the size of two cell phones stacked together. So just to give you indications, we're in that business of that low swap, small size, um, uh, on the move connectivity, the antennas are, uh, are, are small as well. Uh, and we'll talk about the end solutions coming up here in a minute, but this gives you really our service classes under the government. And it really associates, uh, you know, your, your kilobits per second and what it, that particular category brings to the fight. So SPD, personnel vehicle tracking, um, uh, you know, you got your narrowband voice and data, uh, which is your, your, your sat phones, your radios, medicoms. And within that green box, that, what, that is what falls under that EMSS contract. And just to kind of reemphasize what that means as the end user, again, service. If I'm an Army guy on the ground, I'm a soldier, and I'm working at a battalion brigade level, I'm not worrying about airtime in my budget. Uh, it's already been negotiated by big Army. Uh, and I, I'm not worried about how many devices on that particular contract, unlimited devices as well. So pretty important to understand that. Uh, and then we graduate up from outside that green circle, our, our service product line. I talked about the transceivers, 22 all the way up to 704 kilobits per second. So we're definitely pushing video, high quality uh, imagery. If you want to establish, uh, you know, our IP data sessions, internet, uh, you want to establish a VPN, uh, certainly have the capability of doing that through some of our, our terminals. Um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in context of our uh, COMEX. Uh, here's some of the, you know, end solutions. It just really puts the, like, what, what do they actually look like? I think it's important. Uh, Iridium narrowband, and you can walk the line here. There's the transceiver, and again, what we'll do with that, and and, I, and maybe I should point this out. We'll, we'll we'll hand those transceivers to our ecosystem of partners. So we're basically wholesale in a way. Uh, we're o satellite owner operator. Obviously, we we control our our network and our constellation, and we also develop these transceivers. We hand them over to an ecosystem of partners. On the government side, we have about 20 to 20, uh, 25 to 30 partners. 
and they'll wrap a end solution around that transceiver. So it could be a handheld device. It could be the uh, Iridium Edge, which does really uh, tracking of inventory. Uh, Iridium Go, which is basically your MiFi over Iridium uh, and other, other uh, services and solutions. Uh, 2288, you see the two modems to the right. Uh, those are what we call Quicksilver and Connect. Our, our partners, McHugh and uh, NAL Research, are going to be offering those this year in 21, third and fourth quarter, respectfully. And it's a black box modem, but you can leverage that 2288 capability. Uh, so streaming data, high voice comms, uh, graphic uh, weather data, uh, you can establish an IP data session, all that within that on that particular black box. Uh, NSF might be looking at using that as an upgrade to Rudix or streaming. So seismic sensor data over that 2288 could be beneficial. And again, very small box, you know, size of a cell phone antenna, size of your pinky, and you're pushing, uh, 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 you know, high quality streaming data. So very, very huge uh, solution that we're, we're introducing this year. Uh, the 9810, which is the last transceiver, we call it Iridium Service Broadband, up to 740, uh, 704 kilobits per second. That's what you guys probably know as Mission Link and Vessel Link. For Coast Guard, you probably utilize, and that's Canadian as well, uh, the Vessel Link. Um, and as you embark on 70 degrees north, 80 degrees north, having the ability to get on the internet, having the ability to push video, having the ability to establish a VPN to a mission server, all that becomes critical. Uh, and it's a great DSAT companion as well. Uh, on the move connectivity, th that antenna and terminal combined, you can carry on in a, a Pelican case as well. So again, the scalability of these particular terminals is a really a, a, a prevailing theme of this presentation because you know we're not in the, we're not in the business of those big, huge antennas and terminals. These are typically very mobile. They're very, uh, they're built for austere and, and, and environmentally tough as well. Um, yeah, this is our Arctic communications exer exercise. And, um, you know, th this is something we've been developing over a year. And, uh, uh, and I, I can tell you, you know, Mr. Key, you've definitely been briefed on this. And it's taken us quite a bit to develop these relationships, but really bottom line up front in June, mid June, we're going to have nodes, uh, Colorado Springs, Northcom headquarters, uh, the locations listed in Alaska, all the respective organizations, as, as you can see on the slide deck. And we're going to push data to and from US Northcom headquarters. Uh, we're going to go up to 70 degrees north. We're gonna try all our services, products. We're gonna test, evaluate, and challenge. Uh, that's from the narrow band, your voice, all the way up to push and video. Uh, we, have a, uh, uh, we have a company called Answer in Norway. They do a lot of compression. And I'm, I'm, about to sh I'm gonna show you a video here momentarily, but being able to push full motion video at 1080p is in the realm of possibility over Iridium. And that's a game changer, especially in the Arctic. Um, so we, we want to highlight that. And that's going to be something that we're going to uh, uh, display during this, this communications exercise. You can see on the map, it's, it's kind of a global reach here. Um, you know, we're going to hub out of Alaska. We're going to hit all these locations. We've already established relationships with all these uh, uh, organizations. We're also going to have a uh, full motion video feed, live feed from Norway whether that be a UAV or a, a, an Arctic, you know, a, a, or Arctic cat, whatever it might be, on the move connectivity. Uh, we would love to uh, fold in U.S. Coast Guard, uh, Canadian Coast Guard as well. If there's training, crew training that you want to uh, 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 implement or leverage, uh, we would love to be part of it uh, if you're interested in participating in this. And really what this is, is, I mean, we've been in the Arctic since the inception, 20 years, uh, really been a, a primary member of the neighborhood. But we want to, with this Iridium Next, we want to showcase some of our new services as well. And I think it's a game changer, especially for Northcom, as they're developing Arctic strategies, 
and policy. They need to know what they have uh, at their disposal. We're also uh, uh, in discussion with Starlink to fold them into this uh, exercise as well. We're developing an interoperable concept uh, in ultimate, you know, the ultimate destination there is a multi-mode or multi-constellation terminal. Uh, so you'd have a smart router and it dictates which constellation to use, Iridium or Starlink, big pipe, Starlink. Maybe you want to go low power, low intercept. Maybe you want to le leverage uh, uh, alt TNT, uh, maybe our SBD or narrowband services, you go the uh, Iridium side. So we're developing this concept. We're going to start demonstrating as early as next month. And then ultimately, we want to have it as part of this particular COMEX as well. So again, not really in competition with Starlink. It's more of a uh, complementary um, as we all embark uh, to the Arctic. Uh, here's uh, that full motion video uh, I wanted to talk about. This is 70 degrees north. This is over our Mission Link uh, terminal. And again, Mission Link is that, you know, bigger BCX transceiver we, we, we looked at. Uh, again, I mean, if you wanted the, the Mission Link, you can carry in a Pelican case with the antenna. Uh, but anyway, the, the, they integrated one of the Mission Links on one of these vehicles uh, and were able on the move 70 degrees north. And again, this is at... 180 kilobits per second. Uh, so we're within that uh, narrowband space, uh, 10 uh, frames per second, 1080p high resolution, and then you got the full motion video. And uh, this is what, you know, this is over Iridium Network. So this is a game changer in, in, in the regards that if you're up and you're leveraging Starlink and uh, they can certainly push the same type of data and you don't have, and then you're, you're coming up on a network outage from a Starlink perspective, you can still switch over to Iridium and get the same effect from an operational standpoint. Again, that, that we'll develop, this is gonna be highlighted within that, our demo with Starlink as well. Comex and also our, our, our uh, demo uh, concept with Starlink, but just kind of interesting being able to push that full motion video over Iridium. And I think uh, Mr. Treadwell mentioned that. Um, above being able to do this on a vessel, being able to push polarized video, uh, video uh, I think is a, is a game changer. Yeah, this is uh, Cutter Campbell. They were up at, uh, you know, Greenland. This is a testimonial, um, you know, using Mission Link for, uh, for internet uh, and uh, very positive testimony. I think that was at uh, 70 plus degrees north. Um, so we like to track some of our, our testimonials I uh, love the Coast Guard and what they do up north. Uh, uh, also pertains to the Canadian Coast Guard. We've been in conversation uh, with Canadian Coast Guard over the last few months. Obviously, they, um, uh, they use Iridium. They're in the process of integrating 57 vessel links. Uh, really, vessel link is really the maritime version of that mission link that I just mentioned. But that's 700 kilobits per second. So you can push video. Establish IP, uh, you know, you're on the internet, um, sending emails, uh, you're establishing perhaps a VPN to your uh, mission server. Uh, so all these are capabilities that you can do over that particular vessel link. But 57, Canadian Coast Guard, they're up, they can go up to 80 degrees north. And I think they're in the audience, but uh, we would love to fold them into our COMEX in June. We've, we've started conversations with them. Uh, so if they, they happen to be up there and they want to send a video over uh, Vessel Link, Ultimate Destinations, U.S. Northcom headquarters, we're definitely open to that. I think it's just the betterment of that global, that Arctic reach of SATCOM. Um, they, they were at one time uh, evaluating Mission Link. They, they still are, I think, uh, but definitely integrating those 57 Vessel Links. So really good use case for us to, you know, to reemphasize that uh, validation in the Arctic. Yeah, we, we're built across these particular lines of business, Iridium as a, as a company. And you'll see a lot of cross flow with these. Um, they're stovepipe, but yet you, you can see, we, we definitely reach across the aisle. And a lot of your, maybe your state uh, and local agencies will leverage the commercial side of Iridium. And that's fine, that's absolutely okay. Uh, we are on the government side, more federal base. 
but not to say we don't try to enable some of these state and local agencies, but they, they might use our commercial side. But here's all our lines of businesses. That IoT is really big for us. I will say that. Um, yeah, Maritime, VSAT Companion, that vessel link, uh, is proven pretty beneficial uh, for operations, especially up north. Um, you know, oceanology, early warning, uh, clean up buoys. And, and you're sure you're going to see SBD or, or short burst data or very small narrowband transceiver on buoys. You can see a lot of that, uh, you know, pushing remote telematics, you know, salinity, water temperature, depth, et cetera, um, over our network. But, you know, you can also introduce our sort of product line to those as well. That 2288 capability up to the mission link space. Uh, it'd be great to be able to push imagery and video of a, a cleanup um, over the Iridium network. It really just adds a lot more fidelity to, to your use case. But uh, uh, from a maritime, we also introduced GMDSS as of January. I think a U.S. Coast Guard has adopted this, this capability uh, for safety services. So this is something that we're, we're, we're definitely proud of. Um, so if, if any of the other maritime, perhaps Colt, the Canadian Coast Guard, if you're interested in uh, Iridium safety services, and maybe you're already using it, uh, certainly let me know. We, we, I can definitely give you a, a briefing on that. Uh, yeah, land mold, this is what, you know, we're, we're traditionally known for, to be honest with you, our handheld devices. But you can see the different mission areas that we thrive on. Perhaps cell phone towers are down. Uh, we're part of your pace plan. That's fine. In the Arctic, we might be your primary. Uh, but all, also that fire, you can see the fire rescue. Our terminals are, are very environmentally tough as well. Uh, so all kinds of austere, uh, very remote areas in, in, in locations of, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, disasters. I would say also a lot of this is on the move connectivity. That mission link that I talked about can be integrated into a vehicle. So you can have your terminal in the console, antenna on top, very easily integrated and you're pushing, and you're on the internet on the move over Iridium. So I think that's, again, that added feature on the move connectivity. Uh, yeah, flight, we just announced that we're doing safety services for the KC-135 fleet. Um, so safety services uh, for whatever 300 plus U.S. KC-135. So definitely from an a, a aviation standpoint, there is that narrowband piece, but we're also trying to introduce uh, service. Uh, we're going to have that Quicksilver, that black box modem that I showed a few slides before. We're going to introduce it into multi-network packages or racks for KC-135s. Um, and also perhaps other cargo jets, C-130s, uh, bomber community as well. Uh, that's going to be featured during Global Lightning, uh, maybe Northern Edge, uh, Mobility Guardian, all these exercises. We're going to start introducing that 2288 capability, IP data sessions from, from the cockpit. Um, UAVs as well. Uh, if we're pushing full motion video, um, you, you know, that 2288 high quality imagery, very small packages. We could be part of a UAV payload and we can also send command and controls, Arctic beyond line of sight. Perhaps your category five is going over the Pacific Ocean and you need another means of command and control. Why not be able to use the Iridium capability? So we're in talks with all the UAV communities, whether it be the prime contractors, program offices, et cetera. We do have a play from a payload and a command and control perspective. Uh, so just, just something to think about from a UAV perspective. Uh, yeah, IoT, it goes across the board. Um, and the IoT kind of has that cross flow across all our lines of businesses as well. Uh, yeah, uh, from a Arctic standpoint, buoys. Uh, from a Navy standpoint, uh, liquid robotics and their uh, uh, wave gliders, UAVs. Um, all this is, is included within our IoT uh, 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 portfolio, and you can see all the different mission areas and to be able to leverage that very small terrestrial footprint, that very small terminal antenna on the move, very austere locations. It's a, it's a perfect fit. Uh, 
We're, most of our network is TRL9, um, yeah, very mature network and end solutions, um, whether it be voice, uh, whether it be sensors, unattended sensors, short burst uh, technologies, uh, you, you name it, we, we have it. And we, I, we can, I can certainly pave that path to our partners for those introductions. We're global, we're secure, we're resilient, we're affordable. Uh, voice, data, video, IoT, all that's included. And again, I think, you know, the Arctic for us is a neighborhood. We've been there for a while. And we know there's going to be a lot of introduction with uh, to uh, other new emerging technologies. Uh, we're in the business of collaborating, uh, not necessarily competing, uh, to have that holistic solution up north, that continuation of comms, which I think is very critical. Uh, with that being said, that concludes uh, the presentation portion. Uh, I'm definitely open to conversation and uh, discussion. Uh, Charlie, thank you so very much. Uh, first of all, can you hear me okay? I can, absolutely. Great. Thank okay, you. my mic was acting up a moment ago. So first of all, let me say thank you for the, the ref, those set of reflections. Uh, you, you gave a, a lot to chew on. So one question I ask you uh, on behalf of the, the team here, I noticed that uh, you have, uh, you would like to get a releasable version of your view graphs if we can post to our website uh, yep. for people to follow up. If we could, again, I, I noticed that what you have currently, I don't believe is re releasable form. So if you can give us a releasable version, that would be great. Um, yep. So second thing I'd ask you that uh, this aspect of time in the, um, the plan time for your exercise, your communication exercise, do you have a specific window you're looking for for this? Right, yeah, so it's gonna be, uh, yeah, that's a great question, thank you. So, um, and I'll definitely confirm the date, but I believe it's uh, uh, mid-June, so I think 15 June-ish, I think 15 to 27 June, uh, Mr. Key is what I have in my head right now. Uh, we're, we're still firming those dates up, but to give you a window, 15 to 27 June. Uh, great. So thank you for that. Um, I, if there's a way to uh, perhaps to, to have a planner's uh, discussion for all the partners sure. you've listed, yeah. um, I, I know that there's quite a few folks uh, to include our center would be interested in being part of a planning session and how we can tune into the exercise. We think it'll be a great opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. There's a, so if there's a way to advertise and we'll happily help advertise that for you as you would like. Um, again, just again, trying to advance anything that does with science experimentation. We want to be a part of it to try to help as, again, as best we can. Yeah, and um, I, you know, just to add some fidelity to that, Mr. Key. So, you know, at, at Fairbanks and Anchorage, we will have probably two to three days where we're demonstrating to all those particular entities and also reaching back to U.S. Northcom. So whoever wants to fold into those two locations, uh, we're, we're definitely open to it. And we also want to you know, obviously focus on Juno and Kodiak as well from a U.S. Coast Guard perspective. Great. Okay. Well, and I think it's really important. I noticed you had USC, uh, if you have a Canupiate Corporation included on your slide. So I think important where uh, we work closely with USC Science. Uh, and so from our vantage point, you know, any connections there that we help you with, uh, UI Science are, are dear friends and partners of ours. So again, I just simply offer that as a reflection. I did have some uh, one small point uh, okay. on the clarification of the, uh, you mentioned 70 degrees north for that video. That was, uh, I think that may have been a, a mislabel on the, the latitude, uh, unless you're talking about Norway, because uh, 70 degrees north here has a different look uh, in that one video. So if that was a Norway shot, then totally, yeah. Leave it. So could you yeah, clarify so that? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thank you. Thanks, thanks for that, Mr. Key. Yeah, so that was out of Norway. So our, um, you know, answer compression video that was definitely out of Norway. So I apologize for that. No, no worries. So just so there's a lot of us who zero yeah. in on latitude uh, no, yep. declination. So thank you. No, I absolutely. figured it was yep. Norway. Yep. And we're going to fold that Norway piece into our COMEX as well. So we're going to have, right. have a live feed. Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. I'm just seeing if I have any texts or questions coming in. Um, not seeing any right now. Uh, actually, I do have one text. So let me offer this to you real quick. And okay. looking at your technology, uh, is the ability for uh, small com small commercial enterprises to use this? Do you have a small business uh, entrepreneur relationships 
uh, looking how to connect with small community, small commercial entities. Do you have a small business services type effort uh, for that, Charlie? For your yeah, I, mean, I think uh, you know, I, I I don't know if I can necessarily constitute it as that, uh, but we're very fair and balanced. So we're you know our ecosystem of partners. We don't necessarily. Uh, I mean, we, we look at what you're bringing to the fight from a technology standpoint. So if you're bringing something unique in your small business, we're absolutely open to, to having a partnership relationship or mm -hmm. conversation. Uh, so we don't really discriminate whether it's small or large. We base it upon, uh, do you have a unique capability or technology that you can wrap around our transceiver? And do you have a uh, let's say a enduring or healthy relationship with that particular government customer. Uh, do you have a contract? Uh, do you have a, a historical relationship with this government uh, uh, customer, whoever that might be? That's kind of how we assess our introduction into our partnerships and in our, into our ecosystem. Uh, but if you're a small business and you need to have access to some of our end solutions, uh, you can certainly contact me, Mr. Key, uh, whoever's asking, and I will definitely vector you to the appropriate partner. So at least you're not getting, you know, you know, the third, fourth party cost. You know what I mean? Right. We can still give you that most affordable right. uh, uh, path. Yeah.